At the very beginning, I think it was almost entirely motivated uh, out of a kind of crazy notion that we had that this was going to be fun. We, we never really imagined that it would make a lot of money. I mean, we had advertisers laugh at us and say, you're never going to make it. Why don't you just give up? The uh, paper that's going to make it is the Daily Planet. Well, you know, can you imagine how discouraging that is? <laughs> when uh, y you're in trouble, you got this uh, thin little paper. It really is fragile. And even the advertisers tell you your competitor, not you, is going to succeed. Well, you got to have a sort of uh, perseverance. And I think we did. Why does the reader work? Or does it matter? Why does it work? Yeah. It matters to me because if it doesn't, I don't. <laughs> Why does it work? Uh, because the right people get it and the wrong people don't get it. You know, I'm, I'm always getting calls from people who say, where can you get the reader out where I live in Logan Square or Saugat Saugatash here? Hedgewish. No, Hedgewish. Why don't they deliver it out here? And that's the whole point. <laughs> you guys aren't supposed to ever see it because <laughs> you don't have any money. By far, the most important part of, of the of the product is the ethos of the publication. And the reader is very fortunate, I think, in the way it's perceived by people who don't read it. It's perceived as hip or intelligent or respectable. The reader's got a cachet that very few free publications anywhere in the country of any type have. And if I had to isolate one factor, that's what I'd say it is. It works because it's got the right things in it, the right listings. Pretty good articles, a lot of good criticism. It's unpredictable. Like, uh, I think any successful publication, you can read it on a lot of different levels. You can just go through it for the one ends, or for the advertisements. Or you can read through it to read all the short stuff. If you're marooned on a desert island, you can uh, Pick it up for the long articles. You can read the cover story. We're still proofreading all the editorial copy twice. I don't think, I wouldn't want you to air this if it was false, but I don't think there's one proofreader in either one of those dailies. That, that's, that's the first thing to be eliminated as a way to cut costs. Um, but you're all for cutting costs too, right? But you just have a different not, set of priorities. Not for cutting quality. But sure, you want to you want to uh, work as efficiently as you can. We try. We uh, we're very proud of how cheaply we do everything. We've tried to keep the reader under control. We try to keep it handcrafted. You spend a couple three days a week just trying to get three, the articles together. I spend three days a week editing the articles. Editing the articles. Right. So you spend three days a week editing the articles. How many people do you think actually read the stuff that you spend your time knock yourself out doing, basically? It depends on what I'm doing. I spend a lot of time preparing the listings, the uh, movie and the theater listings, and a lot of people look at those. You know, I'm confident that my time is well spent. When I'm making those as accurate as I can. A lot of people read Dave Kerr. A lot of people read the theater reviews. I'm sure a fair number of people read the dance reviews. That community reads the dance reviews. When I'm working on a page one blockbuster, I have my doubts. You know, when I get beyond page 40, I have a feeling that I'm the only one who will ever read it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, these, uh, these writers all have mothers, so uh, <laughs> there's somebody out there. <laughs>